is the notion of a Christian democracy realistic? How has democracy victimized Christians in Christianity over the centuries? Well, that's a good question. It's two, actually two separate ones. Yeah. And I'll answer the first one first, yeah. the, the second one first, actually. Oh, okay. Um, well, I mean, the first time that ever happened, well, the first time democracy ever victimized Christianity was when uh, they told Pontius Pilate to give them Barabbas. Ooh. Uh, you know, and the, the, the only other example of uh, democracy before that, the first example, rather, of democracy, were Adam, Eve, and the serpent outvoting our Lord in the Garden of Eden. Um, Saul Alinsky called Satan the first, uh, the first um, uh, radical. Mm -hmm. Dr. Samuel Johnson called him the first Whig. I agree with both of them. But you might say, based on the story of the Garden of Eden, that he was also the first uh, Democrat or the first politician. One other metaphor for democracy. I, I forgot who said this, but I loved it. It's democracy is two wolves and a sheep deciding what's for lunch. Yeah, exactly. Wonder, <laughs> I, wonder which way it's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. Well, yeah, you know, the other uh, somebody else said that the end of democracy comes when people realize they can vote themselves other people's money. But yeah. The uh, the thing is that uh, you know it really. It wasn't until, I would say, the, the, uh, the Reformation uh, when various quote-unquote reformers, like Martin Luther, although it got out of his control, roused the peasants to loot the churches. That was probably the first example. Um, and then, of course, you had the persecution against Catholics in the immediate period after the Reformation mm -hmm. in England and Northern Germany and Scandinavia and so on. Uh, then you have to go to the, the, uh, the French Revolution and things like and subsequent revolutions. Now, the idea of Christian democracy, that's the second, the first question I'll address now, uh, it came up basically with the idea that, well, look, the revolution was based upon certain truths. One, the old regime had certainly become to a great degree corrupt and was not delivering in a lot of ways. Two, um, the basic things they called for, equality, fraternity, liberty, etc., surely those are reconcilable with Christianity, with Catholicism. Mm. Surely there can be a bridge between the two. Well, it sounds good. It sounds wonderful. And there have been some tremendously fine and talented people who have given their lives to try to do just that. Lord Acton, uh, in England, the Comte de Lambert in France, uh, most Catholic politicians in the United States, Al Smith uh, comes to mind, uh, Father Coughlin, for that matter, mm. uh, the Catholic worker, uh, Charles de Gaulle, uh, Adenauer in Germany, uh, de Gasperi in Italy, yeah, Schumann, people like that in France. You, you had all these people, especially after World War II, where men of the Christian or Catholic right had worked with socialists and liberals against the, uh, the Germans, against the Nazis and the, uh, and the uh, uh, fascists, and in some places the communists as well. Uh, isn't it possible that men of goodwill can agree on a, uh, we can give up the idea of the Catholic confessional state, and we can have this uh, religiously neutral state that will nevertheless be guided by gospel values. And of this, the, they, they saw in Europe uh, and in Latin America, they saw the United States as being the example of that. Mm -hmm. And that was the vision that uh, got the attention of the Fathers of Vatican II. That was what they saw. And it really sounds wonderful, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, especially when you've, been, when you've spent over a century and a half fighting something and you never win. That gets tiresome after a while. So it's easy to see why Christian democracy uh, became so alluring. Yeah. Especially because uh, for a lot of the uh, uh, a lot of folk before World War II, before World War One, Catholic political parties had arisen 
which were trying to deal with the same abuses in society, the industrial proletariat, all these sorts of things, that the socialists were addressing, um, that the uh, liberals were addressing. So it seemed like, like an easy fit. Mm -hmm. But as is so often the case in life, what makes sense theoretically is not what happens in the real world, mm. uh, which is why you should always be careful. Uh, as my late father always said, never, ever, ever base a definite on a maybe. So, unfortunately, the church hierarchy after Vatican II did just that. And so what's happened? Well, the European Union that uh, was started by very devout Catholics who had in mind something like a revival of Charlemagne's uh, comity and uh, all this sort of thing, it's turned into this horrific monster uh, which their heirs despise. I mean, there being people, as I've said, I mean, even uh, uh, Otto von Habsburg, before he died, his son Karl, who are as dedicated to the European ideal as anybody, uh, hated what the European Union became. They have hope for it still, the way a lot of people have hope for the United States is currently constituted. Uh, because once you commit to an idea, it's difficult to change horses in midstream. Mm -hmm. uh, and they may, they may have more to work with in Europe than we do here, I don't know. We'll see. But similarly in this country, Eisenhower's America uh, turned into Obama's America. Uh, and that, you know, it, it went from being father knows best to a screaming freak show. So, uh, it didn't, I mean, you could make the argument that it didn't have to go that way. But it did. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. whether, whether in some alternative world, as on another planet, another dimension, possibly on a Twilight Zone episode, these things could have gone very differently. Very possibly they could have, but they didn't. And that is my answer. Okay, so is the notion of a Christian democracy realistic? No. I mean, not in terms of real experience. Not in terms of real experience? Yes, in terms of what's actually happened, it's not realistic. I, it was a nice idea. But it didn't work. Okay. Well, would you characterize the 19th century uh, America as a Christian democracy? Well, it, it characterized itself that, or as that, or rather the Supreme Court did. Okay. And, uh, but you and, wouldn't. I wouldn't, but then I wouldn't, they, would, they and I would have different ideas of what constitutes Christianity. Okay. Uh, but they would, the Supreme Court in 1896 would definitely have declared America to be a Christian democracy because they declared it to be a Christian country. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt would have. Yeah, okay.